Hey guys, in this pack, I'm back with the Dora videos. And today what we'll be talking about is <clears throat> an extremely interesting topic that I think is really amazing in Dora, which is constraints. So similar to how we have auto layout in Figma, we also have constraints, but Dora actually organizes itself around constraints completely. They don't have auto layout. Constraints work very similar to auto layout. Now, and I personally think that the constraints in Figma uh, plus the auto layout still aren't as powerful as the constraints in Dora. <clears throat> and you don't necessarily need a tutorial for me to talk about it. Uh, Dora itself has really great uh, reference and documentation, but if we actually just have a look at some of their own guidelines as to how to actually do it. Now, as you can see, they have GIFs here as well. And we're gonna go through some of these, uh, or at the very least most of them. And then I'm also going to be explaining some of the other ways in which you can use constraint layout to help you understand some basic ideas and concepts. So now, one thing that they're basically trying to, uh, or making sure that we understand is how these constraint layouts work. So imagine if I wanted to align this particular object to this one. How would you normally do it? You would probably do it in an auto layout, right? Uh, you would probably select both of them, press shift A, create an auto layout, and now you can adjust the spacing in between them. But one thing that per perhaps you did not know is now you can actually, instead of creating a container, which you still can do, you can also go ahead and actually decide which object is going to be linked with which particular element. So I'm gonna say this object is gonna reference the right point of this object. So anytime I'm moving this object, as you can see, this is always gonna preserve the position or the spacing, which is 100 pixels, uh, depending on this object's right hand side. Similarly, if I was to resize this object, that 100 pixel position will be maintained. So again, that's really amazing. Similarly, if I wanted to vertically align them, I can say that this object should always be in the middle of this object. So I'm gonna say that this object should be, the top of this object should be aligned to the top of that object. And then the, the bottom of this object should be aligned to the bottom of this object. And if I do that, now if I, let's say, move this around, as you can see, I am unable to move this up and down. Why? Because it's saying I cannot really escape this particular thing. So if I'm moving this, as you can see, I can increase the left and the spacing, I can move it up and down. The up and down is always going to, going to be respected. This is always going to be vertically aligned. But now if I actually do this as well, I'm gonna say all of these spacings needs to be equal. Now, even if I move it left and right or up and down, the object is gonna maintain its position. And if I were to, let's say, reduce it, I wanted to reduce it, I can just go and select the object and I can say maybe the spacing in between them shouldn't, shouldn't be 126, they should be 80 or they should be like 200. And that's gonna adjust the spacing. Obviously we won't be able to adjust the top and bottom spacing because we have basically said that this should be in the center. But if we did not want it to say that, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. Now it's removed. Now it's basically saying that the top of this object should be aligned to the top of that object. Even if I explicitly wanted to change that, I can say it should be the top of the left object should be at the top of the right object, but maybe with a 24 pixel spacing. I can do that too. Now imagine how powerful this is. Not only can I center align them, not only can I top align them, bottom align them, I can even do multiple alignments like with pixel perfection, which is again insane if you actually think about it. Similarly, we have this object. We are basically saying that this object is something like this. You're scaling it, it expands like this. I personally think it's fine. But if you wanted to align this object to the, cent to the right of this um, button, so align this badge to the right of this button and make sure that it actually scales from the middle instead of going on the right, you can basically say that this, the left side of this badge, should actually be pinned to the right side of this button. And similarly, the right side of this match should be pinned to the right side of this button. Now, if you actually expand it, as you can see, since I've mentioned that both of the sides should actually respect the center or the right side of this button that you see behind, it's actually preserving that and it's gonna scale from the middle. I mean, how amazing is this? Can you even imagine? Similarly, very similar to uh, Figma, um, you have a fill container object. So I'm basically just gonna remove these. If we go here, we can say that we can see that there's like a 24 pixel uh, spacing in between these objects, but let me just actually revert it. I think I played around with it when I was messing with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually place it somewhere here. 
And now imagine you had an object like this. I wanted to say this should actually take the maximum amount of space that's available between these two objects. I can just go here and I can say that I want you to fill the space. So even though there's no container, it's not even looking at the container. What it's doing is it's saying visually in the layout, I'm actually sitting in between these two objects. And what I want to do is I want to take the maximum amount of spacing that's available between these two objects. And that's what it's doing. Now, if I actually scale these objects, as you can see, it's taking the maximum amount of spacing. And since I haven't added any vertical dimension to this, to these constraints, it's going to allow the vertical up and down and everything, but it's not going to again, allow any extra spacing in between these. Even if I want to say that, yes, it should fill the container. It should take the maximum amount of spacing, but I don't really like how they're actually really close together. So maybe the spacing in between should be 16 and it should still respect the fill container. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. Now, if I'm scaling it, as you can see, that still is happening. And I'm sure you remember, if I had to vertically align all of these, I can just go ahead and say that all of these objects, the objects that you see here, should actually, the top should be um, respecting the top and the bottom. And then the top of this object should be respecting the top of that. And the bottom of this should be respecting the bottom of this. Now, let's say if I scale this, as you can see, even if I'm scaling, it's still respecting the center of the center object. And I mean, personally, I think it's amazing. So I think there were just a few things. These were some of the things that I wanted to highlight in this particular tutorial. Um, now I'm gonna go and actually create a test page, which I've already done on my own. And I'm gonna share some other things, which are hopefully gonna allow you to figure out how to do these things a bit more simply as well. Imagine you had a container, you can press A and then you can create a container here. So I, I pressed A, I'm gonna create a container. So this is our container. Now, if you wanted to place one object on the left and one object on the right, I'm just basically gonna do that. You can place it anywhere you want. Now you can go to the constraints and you can say that I just wanna pin it to the right and maybe to the center if you want. And that's automatically what it's gonna do is it's gonna not just, it's, it's not just gonna uh, physically place them like you are dragging it or whatever. It's actually gonna pin the constraints to the right and to the top and to the bottom. So now I can define what that spacing should be. Maybe on the right, it should be 32. Similarly, I can go on to this object. I can say this should be centered. So again, the top and the bottom is now going to um, be pinned to the container. And then it should also be pinned to the left. And now I can decide where exactly should it be pinned to the left, maybe at a 48 pixel spacing. Now, if I'm, let's say, resizing this object, as you can see, or even if I'm like doing it something like this, you basically have the object pinned vertically and then you also have the objects uh, having a vertical spacing and then uh, pinned to the right and to the left. Obviously, if I wanted to say that it should only be pinned, let's say at a particular spacing from the top, I would have to obviously remove this um, line or remove this constraint. And I would do that by, obviously I can just do that by going here and then just clicking outside. Or a much better way that I personally think is just going to the constraint and pressing this small cross. You may not see it on the video, but it's there. Trust me on that. Now you can actually just go ahead and say that this should be top aligned. And similarly, if you wanted this bottom aligned, I'm gonna select this object and I'm gonna say the top, I'm gonna remove it. The bottom, it should be 32 or whatever. And now this, these objects are gonna respect that, which is which I personally think is like really powerful and it's really amazing. Similarly, I'm gonna show you how to create a button. A button shouldn't necessarily be as hard as you think. So you're gonna give a border radius to it. I'm gonna add a text. This is gonna be our button text. And what we're gonna do here is quite simply, we're gonna say that this container is gonna hug the, hug the content of this button. I'm gonna say that it's gonna hug the content here as well. And that's, I think, pretty much it. This is a button. This is now an auto layout button. I can also go ahead and define whether there should be any padding in between them. Now the padding here is really important. The padding is not defined on the container here because if I try to let's say define it or something, obviously you don't even see an option. The padding is defined by the inner element. So the inner element is deciding how far should I be from the edges or from the larger constraints that I have. So I can say that maybe you should be far like 24 pixels from the top, maybe that's a bit too much. 12 from the top, 12 from the bottom, on the left, you should be 20 pixel, and on the right, you should also be 20 pixels. So 20, 
20 and then 12 and then 12. So here we have our button, which is obviously responsive as well because we have a hug container set and all of that magical stuff. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Do let me know if you really like the constraints like I do understand its power or if, or if there's something specific that you don't really get in constraints and i'll hopefully cover that in the next video when i actually get to some of the other additional topics like keyframes so that's going to be pretty much it i'll see you later take care bye